Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a polynomial equation. A nice one. We have a cubic equation, x cubed plus 2x equals 33, and we're going to be solving for x values. Now, obviously, you can guess and check at this point, but I'm going to show you a you know, different approach here as well, which we're not going to conclude, but I'm just going to show you how that works. So I'll be presenting two methods, basically, even though the first method will probably be incomplete. So, the first method basically deals with the cubic formula. So, we have something like this. a plus b cubed minus 3ab times a plus b equals a cubed plus b cubed. This is an identity, and you, you'll see that if you expand by binomial formula, you're going to get this identity. But this is a really nice identity because it can be used to solve all cubic equations. Let's just replace a plus b with x, and then we get x cubed minus 3ab times x. I could probably just write it as 3ab times x equals a cubed plus b cubed. Now, if you compare this equation to the other one, you'll soon notice that you can correspond the coefficients. For example, take a look at this. The coefficient of x here is negative 3ab, and here it's positive 2. So negative 3ab equals 2 and a cubed plus b cubed is equal to 33. So this gives you kind of like a nice equation. No, not really nice, but a b becomes negative 2 thirds. If I cube both sides, I get a cubed b cubed equals negative 8 over 27. I got this and I got that, so I can solve it as a quadratic system. Why? Because I can replace b cubed with 33 minus a cubed, then I can go ahead and plug that in here. That's going to give me a cubed times 33 minus a cubed equals negative 8 over 27. Let's go ahead and distribute 33a cubed minus a to the 6th power equals negative 8 over 27. And then if you distribute and call a cubed equals c, you're going to get c squared minus 33c minus 8 over 27 equals 0, and then if you want, use the quadratic formula or make a common denominator, multiply everything by 27, which is going to give you very large numbers anyways, and you can solve for c from here. After finding c value, you can cube root it, and then you can also find b cubed, and then put it together, x is going to be a plus b. And as you can see, this is going to be very, very painful. Instead of that, let's go ahead and do a nicer method. And obviously, this nice method is not always going to work. Uh, this is going to be a special type of cubic. And obviously, this is a competition level uh, problem. So competition problems are usually, there's always, almost always a trick, right? Because you have to solve the problem in a few minutes. Anyways, so what do we have? x cubed plus 2x is equal to 33. One of the things that you can do is called rational root theorem. So you can go ahead and put everything on the same side and then look for factors of 33. 33 has quite a few factors like 1 plus minus 1 plus minus 3 and then plus minus 11 and plus minus 33. Since 33 is the product of two primes, you only have eight factors, four positive and four negative. You also have to consider the negatives because they may also work. But, you know, this is going to take a while. Obviously, if there are any rational solutions, it's going to have to be one of these, right? If no, no rational solutions exist, then we must use the cubic formula. Make sense? Okay. Or you can use a numerical method to approximate the solution, which is something that I don't really like. I don't enjoy numerical methods. I more like abstract methods or analytical methods. Anyways. So, let's go ahead and take a look at this problem and see how we can solve it. So, we have x cubed plus 2x equals 33. First of all, I'm going to factor the left-hand side. Let's take out an x, then I will be getting x squared plus 2. And I'm also going to factor the 33. I'm hoping to find some integer solutions from here, which is obviously going to be one of these that were listed. But, let's go ahead and do it in a more uh, number theory way. 33 can be factored into 3 times 11. Do you think 
3 times 11 is going to be in this form, x times x squared plus 2. Now think about it. A number is being multiplied by its square plus 2. If you square 3 and add 2 to it, you're going to get 11 because 9 plus 2 is equal to 11. So what does that tell you? That tells you that by one-to-one -one comparison, x happens to be 3 in this case. Or at least we can say that hey, x equals 3 definitely works. So x equals 3 is a solution. But the idea is, are there any other solutions? So we can look at it in two different ways because this is a special type of problem. First of all, we can do the following. And I'm going to show you a graph at the end as well. But let's go ahead and explore this function a little bit closer. Now look at this f of x. Differentiate it. What do you get? You get 3x squared plus 2. Now what do you know about x squared? x squared cannot be negative. If you add 2 to it, it can't be 0 either because that would imply that x is complex, right? But x is real, so this is always positive. What does that mean? f prime is always positive. It means f is always increasing. So you have a function that is always going up, and you'll see the graph, and you'll conf confirm that. F is, f is always increasing. Therefore, if you have an increasing function, doesn't matter what the shape is, but if it's being intersected by a horizontal line, which is a constant in this case, then there's going to be a single intersection point, which means there's going to be only one real solution. So, and we already found it by comparison. But what if you didn't know how to compare it or whatever? You could also do the following. You could break down 33. Now, I'm thinking about, okay, what is a perfect cube? That's less than 33, and that's 27. So I can write this as 20. 7 plus 6 and I put everything on the same side and see what happens see I only just broke down 33 and then now I'm factoring this is a difference of two cubes I get x squared plus 3x plus 9 and this is just easy two times that x minus 3 happens to be a common factor so I take it out you're gonna get x squared plus 3x plus x is gonna give me 4x 9 minus 3 is 6 and now we notice that x equals 3 is obviously a solution and that's the only real solution because the other equation does not give me a real solution. How do I know that? If you are familiar with perfect squares, you should know that this expression can be written as x squared plus 4x plus 4 plus 2, which is x plus 2 quantity t squared plus 2, which is always greater than 0. That's the same type of reasoning, but this time we didn't use derivatives. We found the potential solution divided by that and then looked at the quadratic that resulted and it is a quadratic, a parabola that doesn't have any x-intercepts. So the only real solution is x equals 3, but how do you find the other solutions? Easy, just set this equal to 0 and you're going to get x plus 2 squared equals negative 2, which can be written as square root of 2i, square root of 2 times i squared, and from here by plus minus x plus 2 becomes plus minus root 2i, and x becomes negative 2 plus minus root 2i. So those are going to be the non-real complex solutions. Of course, you're not going to see them on the graph, but let me show you the graph. This is a function that always increases, and you don't see y equals 33 because that's way too large. It doesn't fit. Otherwise, you make the graph way too steep or whatever. Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.